थोड़ा सेंस सेकेंडरी हाई स्कूल दैट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट द रेजिस्टेंस यू मस्ट नो द रेजिस्टिविटी ऑफ लाइन लेंथ ऑफ लाइन लेंथ ऑफ वायर एंड क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया इफ वी हैव दीज थ्री थिंग्स वी कैन कैलकुलेट द रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन लाइन इट्स एक्चुअली इजियर देन द कैपेसिटेंस एंड इंडक्टेंस so actually in uh, you know in transmission lines uh, our <clears throat> sometimes in transmission lines uh, we normally uh, we know the cross sectional area if we if we keep the cross sectional area and length constant then the resistance will depend uh, if we keep the area constant then the resistivity uh, resistance of line will depend upon the length of transmission line and also it depends upon the resistivity so copper has its own resistivity aluminum has its own resistivity normal in our head transmission lines we use aluminum so actually basically resistance have uh, two types one is dc resistance normally we in uh, in our previous semesters in the start of electrical engineering we always go for dc resistance and the second type is ac resistance what is difference between them actually you know that there is skin effect in ac current in ac transmission but in dc transmission or dc uh, there is no skin effect so okay let's me uh, tell you Uh, i have told you before that for example if we have any conductor so if there is there is dc current it will flow all over the conductor because its frequency is zero but if we have uh, ac current it will just flow on the uh, you can say that less current will or zero current will flow inside all of the current almost most of the current will flow from nearby the surface of conductor from outside nearby outside of the conductor outside wall of the conductor so that we call it skin effect that's why we have uh, dc resistance is different ac resistance is different if we want to calculate the effective sometime we call in transmission line that this is the effective resistance is different than the actual resistance effective resistance means we are also taking the effect of we also taking the skin effect in our mind and then we calculate the resistance normally we call it ac resistance you can uh, say like this but for dc resistance for dc resistance it flows all over the conductor so firstly in transmission lines we can calculate the dc resistance the actual resistance then we will multiply it with some value and then we will get we are going to get uh, the actual resistance of transmission lines so that's why i want to tell you that there are basically two resistances one you can call is is physical resistance and second you can call it effective resistance or you can say that by taking account uh, skin effect okay by taking skin skin uh, by considering skin skin effect then we will also calculate the resistance so so it, this is important that because of the skin effect the ac resistance is more than the dc resistance this is the most important because you know that uh, what we are actually the resistance depends upon the resistivity length and area so, so as I, I i just told you that the effective area of the conductor will reduce in case of ac resistance so if area will reduce the resistance will increase because they are inversely proportional to each other that's why we always say that because of the skin skin effect the effective area of conductor reduces due to which the resistance the ac resistance is more than dc resistance or the effective resistance is more than the real or physical distance uh, resistance not distance resistance so uh, so second uh, our topic is the how resistance depends upon uh, which which values actually it depends upon area we just consider length and resistivity and frequency i'm talking about 
AC resistance. Okay, it depends upon uh, sp uh, spiraling. Actually, the area and length, you know, it better resistivity. It depends upon the type of material that which type of material we are going to use. So resistivity for each type of material is different. So that's why resistance of each type of material is different. Each type of conductor is different. It also depends upon the frequency. Why it depends upon the frequency? If frequency is higher, the effective resistance will reduce. The effective resistance uh, uh, will be more. The effective is because the area, the effective area from which current is flowing, it will increase a bit. So it also depends upon the frequency and spiraling of conductors. Spiraling, you know, uh, I'm, I'm explaining you what is spiraling. Actually, spiraling is that uh, we do sp spiraling in conductors, like this is called spiraling. Okay. We lot of lot of conductors like two or three to four or more than that. We are just spiraling all the conductors. Why we are doing spiraling? Because we want to increase the. We want to increase the uh, resistance and uh, we want to increase the mechanical strength. We want to increase the mechanical strength of transmission lines. That's why we spiral the conductors with each other, but it also increase the resistance because spiraling will increase the length of, of line. Because if I have a one meter, one meter wire here, if I will spiral it, it may be, it may just cover 0 0.5 meter. But mechanical strength of this wire will be more than this wire. So we do spiraling to increase the mechanical strength of the transmission lines. So it, it increases the resistance and mechanical strength uh, also increased. We don't want to increase resistance, but we have to maintain the mechanical strength due to which we have to compromise on resistance a bit. So resistivity actually depends upon temperature too in conductors, okay? Normally in insulate in uh, semiconductors, the resistivity also depends upon the temperature in insulators uh, also, but uh, we are actually, we are talking about conductors here. So this is most important that it depends upon temperature too. It, it's related to the first problem on your first sheet that what is the, uh, what is the resistance, resistance if we will increase the temperature? Firstly, uh, she asked that uh, what is the resistance at 20 degrees centigrade? And then she asked that what is the resistance at 50 degrees centigrade? So we are going to uh, use this concept in our next slide. So, so we move towards the uh, next slide. How temperature affects on resistance in conductors? So actually, if resistance, in, if, if temperature increases, the resistance will also increase. It's in conductors, okay? It's not in semiconductor, semiconductors, it's different. Insulators, it's different, okay? I'm, to, I'm just talking about the conductors. If, if we will increase the temperature because we are dealing with conductors in transmission lines. So if we will increase the temperature, the resistance will increase. So you must verify your answer. If you are getting the more resistance on low temperature than the high temperature, then your answer is wrong. So you must understand that in conductors, the resistance increases with increase in temperature. As we know that in conductors, if we increase the temperature, then the resistance will increase. I just explained when temperature increase more freely, why actually why it is happening? You know, when we increase the temperature, there are more free electrons generated. But what happened when more free electrons generates, it means that more current R is equal to V over I, it means the resistance should decrease. I'm telling you at last why it doesn't decrease. The second concept is when temperature increases, the atomic collision increases. So two things are happening when in a conductor or when we increase the temperature. It will generate more free electrons as conductor have already have free electrons, okay? So it is, if we increase the temperature, it will, it will generate more free electrons, but it also increases the collisions. 
so you know in collisions when the electrons and atoms collide with each other it increases the temperature it 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 reduces uh, its uh, efficiency in the form of heat so conductors already have free electrons in large amount and very less fraction of electrons are added while rising the temperature even if we rise the temperature we are not adding much free electrons because conductors already have free electrons so this effect is negligible in in, in conductors there there is increase in free electrons but we neglect this because most of the proportion we ha already have free electrons we don't need more free electrons so that's why we are not considering this effect effect number 1 of increasing temperature in conductor but effect number 2 is important because we have lot of free electrons and if we will increase the temperature they will collide with each other okay so while collision effect is so that's why the collision effect is more dominant we say that the resistance increases in conductor when we increase the temperature so in summary i will say that now you under, understood that why the resistance is increasing if we increase the temperature in conductors uh, so here i am giving you a formula that how the resistance will change if we change the temperature i will also prove this formula in just 2 minutes okay this is rt is equal to r not 1 plus alpha t minus t not okay this formula is very important for your problem number 1 on sheet number 1 that actually it is the rt is the temperature at you can say t for example 25 degree centigrade resistance at 25 degree centigrade for example this is uh, 50 degree centigrade resistance at 50 degree centigrade so rt is one temperature r not is actually reference temperature normally we take 20 degree centigrade as a reference temperature in our transmission lines okay we know the sometimes if uh, if i if we install the uh, any uh, aluminum conductor on our on our poles as a transmission lines we give a reference temperature so of course the resistance of the same same conductor same transmission line in in pakistan will not be equal to the resistance of same transmission line in russia because we have temperature differences so if if we want to buy a uh, transmission line from russia we have to calculate our resistance over here to design our transmission line so that's why we this uh, factor is very important that why we are going for temperature so this i i am going to prove that how it becomes like this formula but firstly let uh, firstly we consider this resistivity resistivity is actually also the same resistivity at certain temperature is equal to resistivity at reference temperature at 20 degree centigrade into 1 plus alpha t minus t not t is 20 degree centigrade we normally consider 20 degree centigrade but sometime it is given in your in your problem so you don't need to worry about that you always go for 20 degree centigrade i am just saying that most of times we consider t is equal to 20 degree centigrade so t not is the temperature at which you have to find the new resistivity or new resistance okay one resistance is given for example resistance at 25 degree centigrade is this what will be the resistance at 50 degree centigrade so you just have to minus 50 minus 25 25 my, multiply by alpha i am telling you what is alpha and plus 1 and then whole multiply by the uh, reference resistance which was at 20 degree centigrade so you know how these formulas are same let me uh, clear you this that i know this is rt is rho resistivity length divided by area okay this is also rho length divided by area okay this is same as above i am not talking about this one so you know the we are talking about uh, we are talking about the same conductor in summers same conductors in winters so i if my summer uh, winter temperature is this i have to calculate the summer temperature for i can my winters oh, sorry my winters resistance is this i have to if i want to calculate my summer resistance i can put t as my summer temperature maybe 40 degrees centigrade 50 or uh, anything 
but the length will not change okay the length of transmission line of course is is the same transmission line in summer and in winter and uh, in any temperature so length is same will cancel out this area will be also cancel out so from this formula this from uh, this new equation new relation can be derived from this one we can drive this one so we just cancel out this so don't uh, need to think about that uh, there are two formulas actually it's the same formula so how this formula comes so uh, we know that the difference in resistance is directly proportional to difference in temperature as the temperature difference uh, as the temperature changes the resistance will change as we are we, we have proved here that resistance will increase with the increase in temperature so i can say that difference in the new resistance will be equal to the difference in the new temperature old temperature minus new temperature so i can write this this is directly proportional it is not alpha okay it is directly proportional directly proportional to t minus t not and and i can also say that the rt minus ro is directly proportional to ro and then i will uh, or not and then i will come why i am saying this second one because you know if the resistance of of conductor this is resistance at 20 degrees centigrade at lower temperature is already greater so it will of course the difference will be also more so rt minus i will combine this equation i will get rt minus r not is equal to it is constant okay when we remove the constant of proportionality uh, we will write here is sign of equal equal to and uh, constant of proportionality this this is not propor proportional this is uh, not uh, this is constant okay we call it alpha so what is alpha alpha is equal to change per degree centigrade okay we just call it like that the change normal we call it that uh, uh, temperature coefficient we call it temperature coefficient okay so we can its unit is per degree centigrade for example 0.5 per degree centigrade it means that the resistance it is just a ratio that it will change 0.5 in 1 degree centigrade but it's it's not a linear relation okay it, the relation is not linear so you have to remember these two formulas you can just remember first one and you will know the second one it's very easy so this is a solve problem number 1 which was on your sheet you provided me a solid cyl uh, cylindrical aluminum uh, conductor 25 km long has a diameter of 1.4 something to minus 2 meter obtain the conductor resistance at 20 degree centigrade okay and we are we have also find uh, we have to find the uh, conductor resistance at 50 degree centigrade okay the resistivity is given but one thing is missing in this problem i don't know why maybe you are uh, teacher ha have told you before i don't know maybe you have some table because this th this thing is missing okay uh, the how i can say that the alpha is missing in this question this alpha because alpha for aluminum conductor you can find it on internet it's very easy you can we can find it on, on internet or on some table because the value of alpha is uh, on aluminum conductor is i think 0.00 something okay uh, okay so we will go for solution so we will use the same formula resistivity l divided by a okay okay of course of course you can you can say something oh you want to say something you can so this is the formula we are going the same uh, going to use in this problem is the same formula resistivity length divided by area but <clears throat> okay we firstly we have to find we we can find resistance as 20 degree centigrade okay because the resistivity at 20 degree centigrade is given so we will just just put the value of this resistivity here so we find the resistance at 20 degree centigrade 
for 50 degree centigrade we knew we can use for 50 degree centigrade we can use the relation we uh, relation uh, this relation okay but or not for reference we take 20 degree centigrade the lowest temperature as reference okay always so the lowest temperature here is 20 degree centigrade normally we also take 20 degree centigrade as reference in designing of transmission lines so <clears throat> we are going to use the same formula resistivity length divided by area so here the resistivity is given is 2.8 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 8 I just put the value here, multiply by 25,000. It is the length L instead of L, I put the length line, uh, line, uh, line length is 25 kilometers. So because I am calculating all the units, uh, because in case of resistance, we must use the SI unit, standard units, it's meters. Unit of length is meters. So I converted the length into meters. I just put the value of K, thousand, 25,000 divided by pi. As you know that the cross-sectional area of conductor is A is equal to pi R square. So I just put the value of pi here and radius. If I will divide this by two, because it is diameter, I will divide it by two. I will get 0 0.7366 multiplied by 10 to the minus two and square of radius. So after solving this, after multiplying pi with 0 0.7366, Okay, you can also use your calculator if you want. If there is some correct, uh, some mistake I made here, you can also correct me, no problem. So multiply it, uh, you will get the resistance at 20 degrees centigrade, which we call it R naught reference resistance is 1.879 ohm. So we are going, now we alpha for aluminum is uh, 0 0.00429 per degree centigrade, okay, for aluminum. Normally it is given in problem, but I don't know why your uh, professor is not, uh, she didn't mention here, maybe she mentioned uh, in email or something, I don't know. Maybe she, she just wants you to know about what is alpha for aluminum. You can uh, uh, note down this that, because normally the problems are from aluminum conductors. So, and sometimes from copper. So you know, you must know the alpha value of copper, what is, uh, and for aluminum. So for aluminum, the alpha is 0 0.00429 per degree centigrade. It is its unit of alpha per degree centigrade, okay? So what is the effect of alpha in one, in one degree centigrade? It is going to affect the resistance 0 0.00429 times, affect the change in release, the change in temperature. We call it a uh, constant, okay? Okay, so I'm going to put the value of alpha here, 0 0.00429 per degree centigrade and T minus T naught. I have, I know the T naught is the reference temperature is 20 degree centigrade and T is the new temperature on which I want to find the resistance and or not I have already uh, calculated it from the resistance basic formula. So 1.879 to one plus 0. Point, okay, just, we just solve it and we will get the value of 2, 2.15 ohm. I don't know, uh, maybe you have answers of this, uh, this sheets. If you have answers of this sheets, you can compare with your answers and uh, then let me know in case of any problem. And you can tell me after, uh, I will send you this PPT and after, or you can record it. And after that, you can compare it with your uh, answers of your professor. Okay. Okay, so we move towards the, this is the, okay, this is the problem number uh, one on sheet number one is solved. So we move towards the uh, second problem. But before starting second problem, because it includes the skin effect. Before starting uh, second problem, you must know something more about skin effect that it depends upon, it increases with the increase in frequency, it increases with the increase in area, area of a single conductor, okay? That's why we use uh, uh, spiral conductors, lot of conduct, lot of small conductors, small diameter conductors together to make, uh, to make them more stronger and this will also reduce the skin effect. And permeability, and uh, of course, the, this is the nature of conductor, which kind of conductor we are going to use here, size of conductor, 
and temperature. If you want to know the formula of skin effect, you can just type on Google and you will get it. Because, but in your problems, there is no need to uh, know the uh, formula of skin effect, but you can Google it. It just depends upon these values. So size of conductor. So normally we can uh, change the size of conductor. Sometimes we change it, how we change the size of conductor. There are two types of conductors we use in transmission lines. Mostly we use the aluminum steel. Uh, I think it's aluminum standard. It's like steel, copper, uh, sorry, sorry. I, I just forgot it's uh, aluminum steel conductor reinforcement, okay? This is ASCR conductor. It, actually, the nature of this conductor is it consists of uh, of lot of strands, lot of conductors, we spiral together and it reduces the skin effect. In problem number three, we, you are going to know that how it reduces the skin effect, but is ASCR conductor normally we use in transmission lines. I think it's, I, maybe I have written wrong, it's ACSR, maybe aluminum conductor with steel reinforcement. So, uh, temperature, it also depends on temperature. And uh, okay, so, uh, this is a problem number two. The transmission line cable consists of 12 identical strands. It means that, let me uh, clear you what is strands. For example, I have this conductor. So maybe now I, this is the, maybe it consists like this one, two, lot of conductors, three. If I will cut the wire, from cross section side, I'm going to know that how much conductor it is going to use. That it may be made up from a lot of conductors, like three and four and five. You can just uh, on Google, you can also Google it for the cross sectional image of the uh, transmission line. So, <clears throat> Here the transmission line, uh, the transmission line ca cable consists of 12 identical strands. It means that in one transmission line, we have used 12 reinforced like uh, strands. Strands mean, as I, I just have explained that spiraling of conductor, we spiral the 12 conductors together, okay? And the uh, radius of each spiral, not the total conductor. Here it is just given the radius of each spiral, each strand is three millimeter. Uh, sorry, it's not radius, it's diameter. The resistivity of is also given, it's the same in the last problem at 20 degrees centigrade reference temperature resistivity is given. Now we have to find the resistance at 50 degrees centigrade, but it's in, uh, it must be in per kilometer. Okay, per kilometer of the cable. Assume the skin correction factor of 1.02 at 60 Hertz. So now I am, uh, okay, this, this problem is similar to last one, but only one thing is added, skin effect, correction factor. So what is skin effect correction factor? Actually the skin effect correction, uh, correction factor means that if I am going to calculate uh, the resistance, just I have calculated in my last problem, we are not considering the skin effect there. So that will be the AC resistance, that will be the physical resistance. But if you want to know the, you want to get the results better, and if you want to know the effective resistance, which will be more than the uh, resistance you normally calculate. So this is the difference between, uh, you can say that this is the AC resistance because the current is not flowing on on uh, from the middle of uh, you can say from the middle of conductor so we have to minus that area and if area reduces then the effective area reduces then the resistance will also reduce so we uh, resistance will increase sorry not reduce because resistance and area are inversely proportional so we are also going to include this skin effect correction factor so we will start again in the same way that uh, in solution radius of single strand R is equal to 1.5 millimeter. I want, I have to convert all the units in meters. So, so that my calculations will not, not affect. 
so it must be you must have to convert all the, all the things in si units or in the same units if this is in meter this should be in meter this should be in degree centigrade so you have to take this uh, very seriously conversion of units so radius of a single strand there are 12 strands the radius of single strand is 3 mm uh, sorry the diameter is 3 mm i divided it by 2 i got the radius 1.5 mm i converted it in uh, meters uh, which is uh, i just multiply by 10 is power uh, just divided by 10 is power 3 and uh, i got it in meters okay the value of milli is trans of minus 3 so 0.0015 meters and the total area will be then i will calculate the area so the area of single strand will be pi r square so the so the area of 12 identical means similar strands will be just multiplied with with 12 the area of single is uh, firstly calculate the area of single strand pi r square and then multiply it with 12 i will get the total area okay the total area means the area covered by all of these uh, conductors uh, all, actually the conductor is single you can say the all of these strands the area covered by all of these strands i just i, I am going to multiply it with 12 so i will get this 0.0008478 meter square because here we put square so you don't convert it into meter square the unit of the standard unit of area so we are uh, so i am going to use again this formula r is equal to rho l divided by a so <clears throat> so firstly i i am going to calculate it at 20 degrees and get so i put the value or not okay the or reference resistance 1 you can also call it r1 no problem i just named it as r not as a reference resistance i put the value of because i am firstly i am going to calculate the resistance in per meter then i will convert all the values in per kilometer because if i will put the resistance resistivity value here in kilometers then i ha i have also this i need this is in kilometers actually i need the resistance in per kilometer so but firstly i will solve with same units as a units then at last i can just multiply it with 1000 and i will get per kilometer firstly i am calculating the resistance per meter so r is blue the value of rho is where is this okay this one 2.8 multiplied by 10 to the minus 8 i put here because i am cons i am doing it in meters so i will just put the value of length is equal to 1 meter because i want to i will calculate the resistance per meter resistance of 1 meter so i put the value of l is equal to 1 meter and area is 0. Point, area is i i have uh, calculated here i just put the area value of area here and then i will get 3 3 because it's uh, <clears throat> because 2.8 denominator is very less so 2.8 becomes 2.8 divided by 0.008478 uh, becomes 330 uh, uh, large value here so i i just uh, you know we move the this point over here and then add number of positions 1 2 3 4 4 4 plus 4 so i will get in uh, sorry i just plus uh, plus 3 because 1 2 3 4 okay just you convert it in you can also can use your method okay if i make some mistake you can tell me so this is 0.33 milli ohm per meter i have calculated from this because the value of milli is minus 3 uh, 1 2 3 4 5 i just move the point after five digits so that's why i written here plus 5 minus 8 plus 5 means 10 to the minus 3 so it is just a conversion of the, the units so i just put the value of 10 to the minus 3 i just written here milli So this is the reference resistance I have found, 0.33 milli ohm per meter. So I'm going to find uh, find the resistance at 50 degrees centigrade. So I will put the value. Uh, I will use the same formula, uh, and the value of alpha is also same because it is also aluminium conductor. So you know that. Uh, sorry, I'm going to use this formula again. The temperature, uh, the resistance at 50 degrees centigrade. So I have calculated the resistance of fifty degree centigrade. 
this one right so 50 uh, temperature 1 plus alpha temperature uh, uh, t minus t not so what is t t is 50 degree centigrade t not is 20 50 minus 20 is 30 multiply by alpha plus 1 i have solved this and i got 0 0.37 milliohm per meter so you see here when we increase the temperature from 20 to 50 the resistance per meter have increased a bit so now i have also included the correction factor so actually what is uh, the correction factor is 1.02. It means that the resistance is 1.02 times more than the calculated resistance because we have also uh, considering the skin effect. Because skin effect correction factor, normally it is given in table of transmission line specifications is 1.02. So I have just have to multiply it with 1.02, this resistance, and I will get 33 and uh, I converted it in kilometers. Okay, I will. This is in meters. I will multiply by with thousand and I will get maybe 330, uh, 330 ohm and uh, 370 ohm here. If I will multiply it with thousand. So after including the skin effect correction factor and converting in kilometers, so I just multiply with the factor 1.02 given here. 1.02, 1.02. 336 ohm per kilometer and 377 ohm per kilometer. If you have any question, you can ask, then we will move towards the problem number three. Do you, do you want to ask something? No, I understand. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, so we move towards the problem number three on sheet number one. So a three-phase transmission line, so okay, it is three-phase transmission line, is designed to deliver 190 MVA. You know what is MVA? VA is, is the, we normally call it the, the value of S. You know, there are three kinds of powers. We are dealing in transmission in power system P, Q, and S. If we include both of P and Q, we'll get S. So, just don't uh, just don't get confused. It's it's a power, okay? Mega volt ampere. <clears throat> so, a three phase transmission line is designed to deliver one ninety point five mega volt ampere. It is power at two twenty kilovolt. It is voltage over distance. Distance is given. So sixty three kilometer. It is a short transmission line. Less than eighty kilometers, we consider it short transmission line. You must know that. So. The total transmission lines, uh, line loss is not to ex exceed 2.5% of the rated line MVA. If the resistivity is this, find the conductor of, uh, find the diameter of conductor. So we have to find a diameter of conductor, but firstly, you should know that, you should know one thing, it's most, most important, that in, in short transmission lines, less than 80 kilometer, we don't consider the uh, effect of capacitor. You, if, if someone told you that you model the short transmission lines, you will just put a resistor here. This is resistor, okay. And inductor over here. And you will say like this, this is open circuit model of short transmission line. This is sending end voltage. And this is receiving end voltage. Okay, this is the model of short transmission lines, less than 80 kilometers. So we don't consider capacitance. Why we don't consider capacitance in short transmission line? Because as I told you in capacitor, the transmission lines act as the uh, parallel, parallel plates. So we don't have that much area, we can ignore them. So due to capacitance, the sending end current is not equal to receiving end current because if you see the transmission lines of uh, the medium transmission line, for example, I'm considering a T model of medium transmission line because there are two models. In medium transmission lines, we also consider the capacitive effect. So the sending end current is, for example, I don't know how much, for example, it's uh, uh, five kilo ampere. Maybe it's, it, it will be more than this, but I will just write five kilo ampere. I will just receive 4.5 kilo ampere here. 
in medium transmission lines it happens in medium transmission lines kilo ampere normally we say that the current in series is same but due to the that capacitor effect the transmission line charge is itself and what it did it uses the current so current divided here we can say that 0.5 kilo ampere flowed in uh, like uh, in uh, it's flew in uh, in in capacitance in capacitor it it charges it helped in charging the transmission lines so but in short transmission line we are not considering any capacitors okay so in short transmission lines we are we can say that it's a model we can say that there is no parallel component so sending end current will always be equal to the receiving end current but there will be difference in voltage so after when we will study the modeling of transmission line i will tell you that what is voltage regulation sending and voltage receiving and voltage losses everything here just uh, i i am just focusing on short transmission line because it is 63 km less than 80 km is short transmission line so sending and voltage is uh, always equal to receiving and volt uh, sorry sending and current is equal to the receiving and current because there is no parallel component here in short transmission lines so what i need to know that okay this is uh, just keep these these things in mind okay i just told you the sending and current is equal to receiving and current in short transmission lines so for diameter i have to know the resistance sorry i have i must know the area after that i can i can find uh, radius from there we can i can find diameter okay so for area i sh i must know the resistance because resistance is equal to rho l divided by a because i have length of line mentioned okay so resistance uh, so for area i i should know the resistance of line if i i'm going to use this formula so for resistance what i will do here uh, do you have any suggestions over here that how we can find the resistance do you know can you guess that how we can find the resistance of this transmission line without the because we don't have uh, diameter here so we don't have area we cannot use the formula r is equal to rho l divided by a so do you have any other formula from circuit analysis i don't know to be honest okay, okay. okay i'm telling you just actually uh you have uh, listened about the power loss okay that transmission lines have i square or or losses i square or or means resistance i square or losses the transmission lines have these power loss so if i know the losses i can find the resistance from that because i square or is the formula of losses so if, if i know loss i can find resistance so what is loss actually the loss is given is 2.5% of the rated mva rated mva is 190.5 so i will just multiply it with 0.025 and i am going to get the value of i square r so i got the losses i square r losses is equal to 4.76 mva these are the losses in transmission line so now we have to find i so <clears throat> i got this one but i don't have current so how we can find current this is power okay this is s s is equal to v multiplied by i we have v so we just divide these two and we will get current okay i is equal to this is the formula i am writing here actually you know that s is equal to rated power is equal to rated voltage multiplied by rated current s is equal to vi so if i want to write p p is equal to in ac i am not talking about dc cos theta which is a power factor so if i want to know about q i will just multiply vi and sin theta of course if i will know cos theta i can find sin theta if i will know the angle is this is the actually the angle between the this voltage and current this voltage and current 
Okay, so S is equal to V I. As S is given, so I am not considering about angles. So the value of S is one ninety point five uh, mega volt ampere. Okay, so I will just divide it it with the voltage of two twenty k, and I am going to get the current. So if I will get the current, I can find the resistance of this short transmission line from this formula. Okay, so <clears throat> these are the losses, I square R losses, 4.76 MVA, which I got from uh, this problem that the losses are 2.5% of power delivered. So I just multiplied it with 0 0.025. So I got the I is equal to S divided by B formula I just have explained to you. S is 190.5 uh, and V is 220K. This, this is 190.5 M mega and V is 220K. So when you uh, divide mega with K, you are going to get K, okay? So it's just 190.5 M 220K, K is 10 to the power three, mega is 10 to the power six. So 10 to the power three is canceled with 10 to the power three, but 10 to the power three is still here, which, we, which I wrote here, K. So what is current is 0 0.86 kilo ampere. So now, I have found the current, so I am going to put in this in this equation. So I will put the value of current here. I am going to get resistance because I square R is equal to 4.76. So here R is equal to 4.76 divided by 0 0.86 K square. Okay, this is square, K square. Okay, 0 0.86 K square. K square means it is mega. So mega will be canceled because K square you know, K is kilo, 10 to the power three. 10 to the power three square is 10 to the power six. So mega in nominator and mega in dominate, uh, denominator, they will cancel out each other, M with M. And I'm going to get 4.76 divided by 0 0.86 square. I didn't write here square, but it's square because I square. So I'm going to get the value of resistance is 6.43 ohm. Okay, so, <clears throat> This is a total resistance because I didn't go in meters. I just found it from the total power, the total voltage, the total current. So it is a total resistance. So the total resistance is this. Now the area, you know, from this formula, I have found the total resistance. I have the length. I have the resistivity. I can find the area. It's easy. A is equal to rho multiplied by L multiplied divided by R. R is 6.43, rho value is given, this is resistivity of aluminum and uh, multiply by 63, uh, sorry, what is 63 here, 63K, it's, it's wrong over here, okay. It's not 63K, it's actually, yes, it's K. Because I am going to calculate the value in meters, okay, everything in SI units. So I put the 33 kilometer as 30, 63 kilometer as 63K or you can also write that 63,000, okay? So 10 to the power minus eight plus three because of that thousand ten to the power three, minus eight plus three, I'm going to get the 10 to the power minus five. I divided 2.8, I multiplied with 2.8 with uh, 63 and divided it, it with 6.43, I got this answer. So now I got the area. So you know that the formula of area for cross-sectional area of conductor is A is equal to pi R square. So I want to find this R. <clears throat> so I have area now. So I can just divide this area with pi and square root. And I'm going to get the uh, radius of the conductor. I just square root. A divided by pi square root, R is equal to. So from here, R is equal to square root of 2.743. Uh, I just move the point here and uh, I wrote the 10 to the minus four because it is square root. Square root is one divided by two. So that's why I just converted it in uh, even number, minus four. So 0 0.934. The, if you will divide 2.7 with 3.14 and then take the square root, you will get this. And the times of minus four square root is times of minus two. I got this value. 
and r is 0.934 centimeter and i will multiply it with 2 because diameter is 2 times radius so i will multiply this with 2 and i will get the diameter as 1.86 centimeter here so this these are the uh, problems on on sheet number 1 given by your professor if you have any other question you can ask now from these problems Uh, do you want to ask something no thank you okay <clears throat> okay you can solve it yourself in as your homework and then you can also ask me on whatsapp if you have any problems in uh, in these uh, in these numericals so now we are moving to <clears throat> sheet number 2 uh, 